You're listening to Talking Hoosier Baseball, a podcast by fan from the IUBase.com website for anyone wanting more information on the Indiana University baseball program. All right, welcome. We're recording this on Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021. I'm Josh Bennett here with our special guest, jo- Jordan Fusey. Uh, tonight's Talking Hoosier Baseball panel includes stats guru Cassidy Palmer, master of the RPI Carl James, and the one reason umpires are happy without fans in the stands, Mr. Chris Feeney. So before we get to Jordan, Chris will bring us up to date with our Hoosier highlights. Thanks, Josh. Not much to really report until about, you know, I don't know, middle of the afternoon today, we heard Josh Fegley retired. So he's called it a career, a week short of 33 years old. And, you know, he really was the first major player to come to Bloomington and really start what has become a run through three head coaches and, and tons of players and tons of draft picks. And, and just to see that Josh Fegley, you know, uh, played eight seasons, played for three teams, finished up with the Cubs. He really showed the first, there's our guy from IU in the majors. And, and you know, it really was a proud moment for a lot of alumni and a lot of fans to see what Josh was able to do. He was Mr. Baseball, you know, going through Indiana in high school. And it was just, it really meant a lot of pride to Hoosiers and Hoosier alumni to watch him do his thing. And he has called it a career. And who knows what he does next. I've seen tons of stuff with him on podcasts and TV. I think he'd be real good in the media. Maybe he'll look into something like that, but who knows? Um, you know, that's about it for the highlights for the week. We're going to have Cass touch on some stats about our guest, Jordan. Thanks, Chris. Uh, so Jordan started out his collegiate career at Samford, where he had a 288 average in 152 games. He had a 370 on base percentage and in 2019, so the last full season, uh, had 15 home runs and 49 RBI. Uh, With IU last year in the shortened season, he had a 283 average in 15 games, hit two home runs, and this one blew my mind a little bit. He drew 13 walks, which was actually almost 20% of his plate appearances, which helped him to a 426 on base percentage, which is pretty darn nice. So Jordan, welcome to the podcast. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, Jordan. So uh, how was it playing two sports at Tate's Creek High School? Uh, Why did baseball become your primary sport? Uh, It was good. My dad and my brother, um, I followed the footsteps of them. My dad was Mr. Basketball at Tate's Creek. And then my brother holds the scoring record. So they really got me into that. And I think I chose baseball simply because, I mean, I was the center at 6'5". It takes Creek. And, you know, at the college level, 6'5", center probably really wouldn't play. So, and then I just really loved baseball. So I took that over and luckily got a scholarship. So that's what took me to college athletics. Okay. Uh, Have you ever traded stories with Blaine Deaton about the high school days? Uh, Blaine was, Blaine's about four or five years younger than me, but we do, we did have the same coach. We had this one coach who would actually throw us like BP and everything with like one finger on the ball instead of two. So like every pitch he threw, it was just like one finger, but yeah, it was like really weird, but yeah, he was way younger than me. So but that's really the only like shared thing we have is just coaches and stuff. So, Jordan, you kind of mentioned a little bit uh, your dad was a high school coach and was such a prominent athlete in his day. Uh, How was it growing up around sports? Uh, It was good. I mean, he's always been there for me. He coached me since I was a little kid and then coached me all the way up until, I mean, high school. So he's always been there, like any mistake I have in the game or any, like, motivation I need. He's, like, right there on the spot. So I've been really fortunate. So what are some of the best things you've learned from him? Uh, He's an old school guy. I mean, so he's more like work hard. And then if anything's going wrong, just like never get too down on yourself or feel sorry because like nobody else is going to feel sorry for you. It's really just like self-motivation and just getting through everything. So just self-motivate, keep working. If stuff's not going your way and it'll all work out. Yeah, You had it old school right from the start, huh? Yeah. <laughs> right. Nice. He's still the That's same a good player. thing. 
Cool, man. Now, Cass did a little deep dive. I don't know if it was YouTube or whatever it was, but uh, she found out about Dom Fucci, uh, first All-American baseball player in Kentucky history in 49, and he played football at UK? Yes, that was my grandfather. So, okay. yeah. And then my dad has the same name, but my dad went to Auburn, and then he was a UK. And his, his dad was a UK, and then he was a punter, and then ended up playing for the Giants. Nice, nice. A little New York, and that's good. It's good yeah. to get the East Coast involved. Uh, so with the family tradition of playing multiple sports, you know, what would you say growing up were the benefits of doing it? Because, you know, we hear about these guys who play baseball all year long, right, and don't mix it up through the seasons. What did you feel like you benefited from, from switching up sports as the seasons went on? I just feel like it just gives you a new scenery. I feel like the kids nowadays try to just focus on a sport when they're like right. 10 years old. And it just completely, I think it just drains you, honestly, just playing one sport year round and then just the exposure to different sports and meet new people, new experiences. I think everybody should try to play as many sports as possible. Mm -hmm. And then would you say you learned something not playing baseball that you've used for baseball? Uh, not playing baseball. I mean, really just how to like deal with different people at like different circumstances just because based on the sport I mean basketball is a lot different because it's more like individualized compared to baseball you have to one person can't win you the whole game so you just got to learn how to feed off of each other and take it with you to practice in games nice now Jordan uh you've known coach Mercer from your brother's playing days at Wright State was that the main factor in choosing Bloomington as a grad transfer? Yeah, I would say it was one of the main factors was Mercer. One of the uh, good stories I have right when I went in the transfer portal, I think the coaches could contact you at like 2 p.m. on like a certain day. And like he was like waiting. And as soon as two o'clock hit, like I get a call from him. And it was just he wanted me so bad. And then him and my brother had such a good relationship that – it really drew me in. Plus, I'm from Lexington, Kentucky, so that's about three hours from here. So I really want to be close to my parents. And then I love Merce, so I had to come here and play for him. So um, uh, how was your experience at Samford? Uh, it was nice. Um, even though we were like a small mid-major, there was only about 2,000 people that went there. But we would always put on – good schedules and then I got really good exposure there too so although it was small it was a very good conference and the coaches there helped me become the player who I am today uh what so far when you from your time at Sanford what was your favorite environment to play in uh, I would have to say Florida State probably we got to open up there and their fan base was just amazing honestly it was about like playing at lsu just the amount of people were there and then some fans are very supportive and then some just definitely aren't on your side so it was fun well that cycle in the tournament had to be a favorite moment uh what, what are some what are some of your favorite moments from from playing yeah i mean definitely the cycle and then being able to break out that year and hit 15 home runs because the year before I had hip labrum surgery and I was kind of down and everything didn't give my team actually made a regional that year. So that was tough. I was very happy for him, but not being able to play then and just bounce back the next year and just be able to hit the cycle and then be able to produce for my team was a really good feeling. So going back to the beginning of last season, um, what adjustments did you make after that first LSU uh, series? Your bat uh, really seemed to heat up after that. Yeah, so me and Murr sat down, and really my bat was not good. I was really rushed. I wasn't seeing the ball well, a lot of strikeouts. And then me and Murr kind of sat down, looked at some video. I just slowed everything down, opened up a little bit. And I feel like that's where y'all touched on earlier, my walks. I feel like as soon as I slowed everything down, my walk percentage just went up so much. I was way more on base and I got way more confidence. I feel like at the beginning, I just was down on myself. I wasn't really producing for the team like I wanted to. And after just talking over with the coach, I was just way back in my element, was able to 
help the team out. So we constantly see stuff coming out from the school about um, all the analytics that they use for hitting and all the neat toys and stuff that they have. So how, how much do you lean on that stuff? Um, we're actually very fortunate with the baseball team. We actually have a lot of things. I think it's, I think it's beneficial. I think you should definitely take a look at it. But I mean, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's like if you're producing, then I don't think the analytics like play a huge factor. Like it just depends. You're hitting it where they're not. I mean, basically that's how baseball is. And as much as you want to use, it does help in the end. But I mean, it's just up in the air. So I'm I'm kind of fifty fifty on it. It's honest. It's, all, it's with Sagerman in the in that room. It must be hard. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, mean, I definitely appreciate every, everything they do. Absolutely. Now, wait, I really wanted just to touch on again about the improvement from LSU. If you didn't use the analytics and it was more just coach. So he just eyeballs that he picks that up from the dugout or was he looking at video? Because the difference was outstanding. Yeah. So we have a it's called I guess we do use a thing. It's called bats. It's like video and they have literally like five angles during the game and then we just slow it down so me and mercer used that and then it was more of like a visual and then how i was feeling so like how i was feeling and then we watched it in the video and yeah we just picked up like right away so i, I think honestly i don't really go for the analytics i go for more video because you can just i mean it's right there in front of you and if it just exposes anything you're doing bad or it'll teach you anything you're doing good. So man, you're more old school. Like you were raised. You want the video. You don't want the robots. I got you. <laughs> no, yeah. Whatever. That works. was really, I mean, to go from that LSU series to like how comfortable you were in that blowout against Purdue or some of those big road games, uh, non-con you really, I mean, you said it, the comfortability was just, it was just so obvious. And I'm like, what, what did they do? They did something. It was, I mean, they had to have, so it was more video work. That's cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely video. It's that really helps a lot of our guys. Honestly, that's that's the main key that we go to is just video work and then just getting back in the cages. Nice. Now, just to touch on a little bit about the academics, I don't know if you're doing online school, but like, what's your major? What are you studying on as far as the grad school work? Yeah, I'm in public health, so I'm doing like a recreation administration, and it's like an all online. So it's been it's been really nice. It's been, I thought it'd be a lot more challenging coming in, but with it being all online, I can just manage that as well as manage practice and games and everything. So it's worked out really good for me. Cool. You spend so much time with the field and in, uh, in the weight room, it could be difficult with the, with the books, right? Oh yeah. I would, I would definitely wish online classes were in my undergrad, but. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be wishing for another COVID though, man. Oh, no, I'm not with <laughs> And uh, as far as, you know, plans after baseball, what are you looking to do uh, maybe with that degree or is there another field you're looking to get into? Um, I might do something along public health or something fitness. That's really what I'm interested in. So it's really up in the air right now. I'm just focusing on the season, but I'll be looking for jobs and stuff during the middle of that. Cool. Mm -hmm. So growing up, were there any uh, MLB teams that you followed in particular? Yeah, the closest team to me that I really followed was the Cincinnati Reds. Um, I grew up a big Joey Votto fan just because the way he plays and how he handles the strike zone. Plus, I play first and just watching him around the bag, it's, it's really amazing. So we went to a lot of games growing up there and then, yeah. So were there any other player, you mentioned Votto, were there any other players that you kind of, uh, that were favorites or you tried to model your game off of? Uh, try to model my game. Um, more recently, I've been trying to model like Cody Bellinger, or like Yelich, just like the more tall kind of linky guys that can hit for power and try to hit for some average. So I like watching just strictly lefties and then, guys who just kind of do it a little bit more differently you could say google daryl strawberry oh Darryl yeah. strawberry. <laughs> no seriously he no. had that long swing lanky you know he had the power in the average too just more of an old school look oh no yeah i love his swing yeah he was yeah. a really good player so uh heading into into the 2021 season uh 
you know, it's, well, first of all, you know, it's great to have you back. <laughs> and uh, what are your goals for this upcoming season? For this season, I'd like to just produce as many RBIs as I can for the team, stay consistent throughout the year. I really, as though I know slumps do happen, but I don't want to start off how I did against LSU. I don't, I want to come in hot and keep it rolling for the team. And I hope we can eventually, I know we're not playing conference tournament as of now, but hopefully we can have a good enough record, host a regional and make it a home haul. All right. Anyone have any other questions that we didn't have on there? Got the Omaha out of him. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are really focused on that, huh? I, we've heard that from a bunch of us. Yeah, I mean, I just think Indiana has just been put on the map, and then there's just a very different mindset just coming in. We got a lot of older guys, and then plus we all just want to go out on like a bang because it's different. Because at like my smaller school, you have to actually win the conference to go into a regional. And here you just have to like have a good record and then like your RPI, everything is it'll line itself up. So we're just sometimes it's even harder to get the at large bid. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Because I mean, you gotta have the whole season, not just get hot in that tournament at the end of the year. Oh yeah, for sure. So I mean, hopefully we start hot and stay hot and figure out this schedule and then be able to produce. But yeah, I mean, that's always been a dream of mine, just host a region and then try to make it home all. Is there anything in particular you've been working on, um, you know, since the, the since COVID struck? Any, anything in particular you've been trying to improve upon? Um, a lot more defensive work. So at Sanford, I was mostly right field, actually. And then they wanted me to be a first baseman here. I played a little bit of first base in high school. So I really just want to – I've really been locking it in at first base and – trying to be the best I can and make our guys look it out there. We really need to work on just our fielding percentage out there and everything. So as long as we take care of the ball out there, I feel like our offense, our offense is going to produce. So as long as the defense is sound, then I think we have a really good shot this year. Have you been getting outside a lot or has it been more indoor for working on defense and fielding? Uh, with all the snow, honestly, no, it's been, we've been in the melon camp, which is, I mean, it's turf and we play on turf, so Man. play so far. But this winter has not been good for getting outside at all. Oh no, it's been it's been rough. Yeah, maybe the delay in the season starting will will benefit. At least you get some more outside time before games start. Yeah, that'll definitely help. If we were playing in about ten or eleven days, I don't think it'd look good. <laughs> right, 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 right. A little there's more a, time to get ready. There's a reason the season always starts not in Bloomington. Yeah. 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 Well, it, there was, I remember at least one year where we, we, I calculated it. It was like four months since an outfielder had probably actually caught a fly ball. <laughs> oh, that year they didn't get outside at all. Right. They did right? not get outside at all. It was like four months since they, since an outfielder had actually had caught a real fly ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, but listen, we've been starting off hot in the non-con in, you know, previous years. So I guess it doesn't matter. Whatever they're doing in that dome has been working. Yep. <laughs> All right. So that'll do it for this edition of Talking Hoosier Baseball. Once again, Jordan, thanks for coming on. We really appreciate your time and it was great having you on. So you can read up on Indiana Baseball at IUBase.com. Follow us on Twitter at See You at the Bart and at IUBase17. On Instagram, IUBase, and subscribe to the Talking Hoosier Baseball channel on YouTube uh, featuring these podcasts game clips, uh, game day media availabilities, and much more. So for Carl James, Chris Feeney, Cassidy Palmer, and Jordan Fusey, I'm Josh Bennett. See you at the BART.